in the immortal words of June Diane Raphael. Is this like a full porno? <laughs> we saw a body of evidence, so you know what that means. Washington, D.C. We are so excited to be back in D.C. with a movie about politics, body politics. That's right, this might be the sexiest movie we've ever done. Next to that weird one with Bruce Willis and the girl who looked 12. Um, if you've not watched Body of Evidence, the plot is simple. A woman fucks a man to death. But did she do it on purpose? Um, that is what we're trying to find out throughout the entire movie. It's a riveting courtroom thriller. And like I mentioned in the opening, porno. Um, to digest this, dissect this, we are going to bring out two of the best in the biz. Please welcome my co-host, Mr. Jason Manzoukas! <laughs> What's up, jerks? How we doing, DC? Wow! Wow, we. So Jason, Ooh, this movie, you can't show me such a horny movie in the middle of a tour. This one was a real problem. I watched this movie on Amtrak today. Which I would argue puts you in I the am now 60% <laughs> of people who are riding Amtrak. I am now on a list. I'm kidding. I was already on the list. Well, we are going to break oh this boy. down. Uh, Jason, did you ever see this movie before? I did. I did see this movie before. Wow. I've seen this movie. I know what this movie is all about. All right. This was like one of the. Well, let's 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 bring June up because this is one of like the sexy movies of my childhood. Well, I want to talk about it all. All right. Well, we will, ladies and gentlemen, to help break it down even further. You've already heard what she thought of the film a little bit, but now she'll tell you her more thoughts. Please welcome June Diane Raphael. How are you, June? I'm well. How are you, Paul? Good. Uh, nice to hear from you. <laughs> uh, June. Yes. Body of evidence. Have you seen it? I have seen it. So for a time in my childhood and early, like middle school years, my mom would request a thriller from Blockbuster. Like whenever the family was going to Blockbuster, she would call out, get me a thriller. And so... I saw, I'm almost positive, I saw this movie with my parents. This was, this was the kind of movie, though, your mom, do you know that in that moment, your mom was asking for a sexy movie? Because the thrillers of the 80s, Basic Instinct, yeah. Body of Evidence, Sliver, all the, all the um, Body Heat, all of those movies are sexy Super movies. Super sexy, yeah. I've seen two in the theater with my parents. One was The Color of Night, that Bruce Willis, one that we did in the podcast. Another one was with Richard Gere, and there was a lighthouse, and there was a lot of nudity. I saw that one with my grandma. <laughs> Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Did it get romantic afterwards? 
It's like, a good question. Because, like, those movies can really stoke a lot of feelings, and afterwards, oh. My and grandma. You know boundaries in his family are. Fluid. All I'm going to say is my grandma is a, a real polite woman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Meaning she won't say anything about what happened between you guys? <laughs> Exactly. Oh, what happened? Boy. What happened? The Comac multiplex stays in the Comac multiplex. Oh God! Um, guys, <laughs> this was a movie that I wanted to see so badly. I only just saw it today for the first time, but it was like this felt to me like the dirtiest thing you could possibly see because Madonna had her sex book in 1992. This movie comes out in 1993. Erotica, her album. I, I just felt like, oh, Madonna knows about yeah. sex. If and anyone <laughs> knows about it, it's Madonna. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was, that was what this, I feel like that's what so much of this was sold on, was, mm -hmm. was the absolute kind of like, it was going to be Madonna in this in, like insanely sexual role, but in a way that was like even more because she was like the, the biggest, most famous person in the world at the time. Yes, you know? the sentiment is definitely like, we get to find out how she likes to fuck. Now, not like, only yes. for the people who were like, oh, I want to know how she fucks, but I don't want to read a book. Yeah. They were like, I just watch it. They were like, guess what? We've got just the movie for you. It's, it's called also, Shanghai Surprise. It's also for people who want to see how she fucks, but also likes a good courtroom thriller. Which, which, by the way, I'm on board for. Like, I'll be honest. Like, this is not. I. This is close to being a good movie. This is good movie adjacent. Jason. This is good movie adjacent. <laughs> I think it is adjacent because I think you got lost in the eroticism of the film. Say it slower. Talk to me. What? Like where? where I hmm. think this movie... I mean, let's get into it. Let's start at the very beginning. There's no reason this woman should be on trial. There's no reason... I mean, things come out during the course of the trial and evidence is found during the course of the trial, but there is, I cannot imagine a judge letting this happen based on what? Well, I Nip, mean. Nipple, nipple clamps. Based on. Okay, there was nipple, nipple clamps, clamps I'm gonna found say, at the scene. I'm going to say that Judge Mabel, the sassiest judge of all time, I mean, I mean this, that is sassy court. This she movie is, had so many, I'll allow it, counselor. Are that you done with so your many. bag of tricks? <laughs> well, he just revealed a major plot point. It's not a bag of tricks. I don't like where you're going. I was like, these are all comedy lines. So, June, this is how Joe Montagna sets up the whole premise. That she insisted on increasingly strenuous sex knowing he had a severe heart condition. And when that didn't work fast enough for her, she secretly doped him with cocaine. His heart couldn't take the combination, and she got what she wanted. She is a beautiful woman. But when this trial is over, you will see her no differently than a gun, or a knife, or any other instrument used as a weapon. <laughs> She's a killer, and the worst kind. A killer who disguised herself as a loving partner. Bam! So, her crime and what she's been arrested for is strenuous sex? They have no physical evidence. Well, they've got the cocaine but that in... But it's not tied to her. Right. It was yes, in his nose Yes, but she nose did bottom. do it. She did it. Spoiler <laughs> alert, she put cocaine in the nasal spray and fucked him but to death. But my point is this she trial did this. should never have This happened. is, the, the, the facts are, she killed that guy via, like, like, like a, a spray and slam. Listen, your reading is your reading, and mine is mine. We no, all no, no, saw wait, different what? things. <laughs> no, I agree, with, I agree with you in the sense that she shouldn't be on trial because they've not done a good enough job figuring out that she, in fact, did commit murder. By the way, <laughs> even if 
And so Ann Archer, I think this is why she's arrested because Ann Archer said she saw her do cocaine once. Right. Yes. But that's still not evidence that she planted cocaine in his nasal drops. I, I agree. I agree well, in the sense that I listen. I think for movies' sake, they arrested her too quickly, but they had the evidence. <laughs> by her the connection way, to the doctor again. She confesses to the crime. But, <laughs> but June, June, you will never not listen, convince me thing, that she does not confess to the crime. The great thing about movies <laughs> is you can see them have your opinion, and I can see it, and I can have my opinion. I, oh my God. I was going to say, though, but having him do cocaine is also not a crime. No, if, it's a, if he doesn't know he's doing cocaine. Okay. Then that is criminal intent because she does know. She dr- Shit, I got to go, guys. She I gotta drug- go. Oh. Sorry, I got oh. I to I figure out something real quick. <laughs> anyway, I can't imagine what that's about. Um, no, she puts cocaine in his nasal spray that is he I doesn't know that. is cocaine okay but she okay. what she does know allegedly is that no 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 she confesses to the crime <laughs> make no mistake madonna says i did it <laughs> what she does know based on that doctor is that he, the doctor that she dated is if he ever did cocaine again with the, his heart the way that it is he would i guess die instantly if, if then compromised, again, I, the movie, <laughs> this is crazy, but Joe Montaigne is correct. Okay. She tried to do it to that Langella. Shouts to Frank Langella. <laughs> Langella barely gets away. Well, barely gets away. He, the, the reveal that he is gay is as if he is no, a murderer. I think he is. It was like, and I caught him in bed with what? A dog. And everyone, oh. Like, when they reveal he's gay, the audience are, oh, this is a very prude court. Uh, yes. Well, this is Portland also. Portland is prude. Well, listen, my point, Jason, I know that she does end up <laughs> confessing it. At this point, though, in the beginning, she is on trial for being a sexual woman. Very much so. And, she is and her sex for that very reason. And the movie is purposefully putting her sexuality and her sexual taste on trial. That is what Absolutely. the movie is about. Is is that <laughs> is that her 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 style of or taste in sex is itself um, you know and and the judge has to keep uh, correcting Joe Montaigne to correct him away from words that are uh, uh, specifically negative, you know, because right. he's trying to frame re- what is absolutely within the bounds of normal sex as something that is inherently wrong or morally corrupt, and that is not what's happening. Right? True. Now, I will say that you both have good points, but at one point, and we've done this show for a long time, I just wrote down, movies are silly. (laughs) Because there was such acting. Like, when Willem Dafoe, who I think is a brilliant actor, but when he says, like, that's something I never asked my clients, I was like, "Ah, it is acting. It's fun. We're all having a good time. I'm also... You're not really a lawyer. You're Madonna. That's a fun... Put on a show, put on a hat, put on some glasses, let's do it. In the first scene, in the first scene when the police are investigating the crime scene and they've got uh, markings on the head, on the rail of the bed, um, markings that are clearly the result of handcuffs or restraints of some sort, the police, the guy who's an expert at analyzing the situation says, looks like she was chewing on the wood. What? You're a middle-aged policeman in Portland. You've never seen handcuff marks on a bed frame? And you have seen teeth marks on a bed frame? So frequently that you're like, I know what this is. This is one of those classic gnaw jobs. It's interesting, though, because the police should be much more jovial it's a sex crime but they seem to respect it a little bit more than it like wait they they should be more jovial because it's a sex crime (laughs) why because that's not a real crime no is that what you're saying paul paul are you saying that they should be joking around because it's only a sex crime and not a real crime it's not a it's it's an svu not a rig whoa 
These mics are hot. Hot mics. Go ahead, Paul. Sorry. I was saying no. Like typically in a movie like this, you would see these cops going, "Oh yeah, I bet you." They'd be enjoying it a little bit. Yeah, more. and they are. I was surprised at their restraint. Their reverence. Uh, yeah, their reverence to it, but also then immediately dropping that when he's trying to put the nipple clamps on himself. Like, it is without judgment, but it also seems like poor police work. So much so they're like, put that in the bag. You've just put your fingerprints all over evidence. <laughs> um, the other thing was, why was Willem Dafoe at the burial? Is he just a lawyer waiting? Great question. Like, so, maybe I'll find a gig today. I do think she... I think she says she had called him, and oh. he was there to find her, to talk to her? I'm no, because sure. she says, you must be the lawyer, because no one else wants to talk to me. But would you tell a lawyer to meet you at the burial? <laughs> um, I don't have that much time to meet today. If you could meet me at the burial, <laughs> that I have a little bit of time after the homily and right after I put a rose on the casket, that would be great. And, the walk and, car. and I'm definitely sure I'm about to be mur- arrested for a murder I 100% committed. The one thing I didn't get about this alleged murder was <laughs> if, why did she leave the video playing? Why did she leave the I wrote VHS that down too. Playing? Um, I was like, because like, I thought, like at first, they describe it later, but I was like, is that a live feed? It isn't. And then like, so then he just died watching himself fuck? Wait, in the opening scene, yeah. he's alone in bed watching the video. Is he dead already? He's they, No. Oh, God, no, he's not. I think he is dead. She didn't do it, you guys. He's alive. Wow. This is a wild reading of this movie. <laughs> Um, I think he is dead, but is he dead at the beginning? Yes. Okay. Okay. So when we, because I couldn't tell, I couldn't when we tell. come up and the video is playing, we're looking at a corpse, right? Right. Okay. Great. Okay. okay. So a corpse on a stormy night. By the way, this movie has one lighting mode, which is there's shades and light is coming in. Everyone is getting one piece of light across their face. Well, that's, I feel it's like, like... Someone watched a film noir class and was like, got it. it. That's it. They, yeah. That's again, they, I think they sold this on, it's a classic film noir. She's a classic femme fatale. This Do is you what like it is. Double indemnity? Don't Imagine un- it. Don't unspool us. Fucking. Do not unspool us. Great episode. Ed Brubaker came on, talked about his dad. But this is this is double indemnity. You right. know what I mean? That this the, the, this is a modern take on that storyline of her tricking the guy into thinking he's helping her. In, anyway, it doesn't matter. Double indemnity. Great movie. Billy Wilder movie. Great but podcast. Unspooled, unspooled. Not sure about the podcast. America loves never been it. on it. North Jim? America specifically. I've never been on it, so I can't speak to it. Can I ask a quick question? Has anybody in the audience been on Unspooled? As a guest? Thank you. No, yeah. they haven't. Yeah, a bunch of these audience members. Wait, really? Been. Yeah, I invited them. I comped them all. <laughs> I comp all of our guests. I'll normally just call people in D.C. and be like, you want to come on and just share a thought? <laughs> and now it's time on Unspooled for D.C. Shares a Thought. I have a, uh, a phone book. I just randomly dial a number. Someone picks up and... You have a phone book? Yep. You have a D.C. area phone yep, book? Yep, that's big. I got to carry it with me. It fits in my backpack and uh, walk around with it. No wonder you get bullied so much. Well, you know, they could kick me in the back, but it doesn't hurt because I got that phone book there. Um, but I think what, what undercuts this movie, because I think you're right, Jason, like, in the very sense of the film being like a noir thriller, like something is pulling the rug out. And I don't know if it's the lack of chemistry. I don't know if it's just goofy. Like, I like, thought they had chemistry. You did? Oh, see, my biggest, I will say this, my biggest problem in the movie was that I, I and I thought Madonna was great, but I did not feel like she had the depth of the, the potential to have the depth to give that character the complexity to make her truly, like, 
fascinating. Like the way yeah. that honestly, Sharon Stone is in Basic Instinct. Yes. Like I and, and, Kath, and Basic Kathleen, Instinct too. Of course. I mean, you know, like in body heat, in body heat, you know, like Kathleen Turner, like these are characters that you are just like, that are truly like amazingly drawn. And For this sure. just didn't, ha- it felt flat. Yes. I, having just come off of Shanghai Surprise. Oh, so much better. My expectations were so low. Of course, of course. That I was like, Madonna's a star. Oh, no. She's a, a wonderful actress. And, and I did actually think she's, she's competent and she has to do some totally. things in this movie. She is She has leaps, to do them. Leaps and bounds ahead of Shanghai. I'm not trying to take, yeah. I really mean it. Like I thought she did great, but if the movie, I think the movie, that's what I say, like the movie is good adjacent, like better performer, better stuff. I think this becomes a more interesting movie. Yeah. Not a good movie maybe, I don't know. I mean, we know nothing about her character or motivation. Except that she's innocent. Except that she's completely innocent. <laughs> well, I knew, I knew she was suspect when I saw that houseboat. I was like, if you're on a houseboat, you're up to it's, something. You will hear this episode then maybe in the near future, or maybe you've already heard it, but also in Drop Dead Fred, there's a woman in the, in the late 80s, early 90s who's childless, single, living on a houseboat. That is such an 80s, I guess now early 90s, right? Isn't this early 90s? Early 90s, Such a trope that doesn't exist anymore. Like, if you would have asked me in 1984 my dream living scenario, I would have said houseboat. Now, Well, the thing is that I... The thing that I love about it, though, for women is it's like she has no place on land. You're a pariah. She's... You're yeah, a pariah. Like we, you You're can't an unmarried walk woman? on this land. Yeah. You don't. You maybe don't want to have children. Like get out off the land. You know what it is. You know what it is. Society is saying drown yourself. <laughs> Their answer is not quite yet. I thought it was <laughs> single ladies want a house that can rock with them when they fuck. That's it. That's what I thought. By the I did way, do... the house looked amazing. amazing. I mean, I've never seen anything like that. I mean, it. <laughs> I, there were some interesting choices there. One being the giant vase just simply in the living room. Um, and just the amount of candles. She seemingly hot. Oh, we have some candles in the audience oh, tonight. Wow. I appreciate you. <laughs> Those are going to be hard to drip. Well, Okay. <laughs> If, if you now produce four candles, I'm going to fucking freak out. Three candles. Because there was two, then there was three. And if there was suddenly 16 candles... And then um, Molly Ringwald came in and said, I yes, have a question. And Jake Ryan. But um, that houseboat... That houseboat is the classiest houseboat. I did some research. I Googled it today. Apparently, houseboats are very big in uh, Portland, where she was, oh. where this movie takes place. And they're called float homes. And as of right now, there are 450 float homes in Oregon. Wow. So that was some real research there. Um, I guess what I was really unclear about until the very end was that Willem Dafoe was married to Ann Archer. No. Oh, no. I mean, was married to uh, Julianne Moore. Sorry. Who Julianne Moore and Ann Archer in this movie look a little bit alike. This... This, I mean, straight up, Ann Archer in my soon-to-be Ladies of the 80s podcast. A full season will be dedicated to Ann Archer. I loved Ann Archer. But Julianne Moore crushing in... I loved I loved her. I loved, I loved her, like, running her restaurant. I loved, I loved all of... All. I loved That's, everything. It was one of the best parts of the movie for yes. me is the development of that relationship and what she did with so little and, and their son her son from another marriage that is Fascinating. like that is not like they don't dig in on anything but it's all there yes. but that's why I thought they weren't married I feel like that wasn't first of all Willem well, because Defoe you does, can't expand your ideas about what family structures look like it's just like locked in well, I think it was more due to the fact of the way that Willem Dafoe talked to a child, um, which was... I've, keep in mind, he's still Willem Dafoe. Can you really screw someone to death? No. Besides, you don't have to worry about that stuff yet. Do you? No. 
know. Because you are a good looking guy. Let's go. Nope. So no, thank weird. you. No, thank you, sir. <laughs> Here's the thing. We need to be able to talk to our children about uh, how much pussy they're gonna get. We can't let them be afraid out there. We have to let them know. Guess what? In a couple of years, you're gonna be drowning in it. By the way, Willem is lying to him. You can screw someone to death. That's the one thing that we know about this movie. You can do it. Frank Langella says she tried to screw me to death. Like, that's the central well, thing. But it didn't work, and it's, it's hard to know. So, again... And I wouldn't tell a kid. I, would I wouldn't tell, tell a child kid that. There, but she did Old not to actually... I don't know what the autopsy report actually said. I Cardiac think arrest. He died, right, but it seems he died from the cocaine and not from... No, no, the, se- the, the strenuous sex plus the cocaine is what gave him a heart attack. Hey, if you got to go out... But how would you... I mean, I'm what genuinely mean? wondering how you what would you possibly out, right? know that. Paul, are you asking to be murdered? <laughs> Not in, a bad a, way to go, am I right? Where are my bros? A high five, right? Where are your bros? High five? Bud lights for everybody. Bud lights? <laughs> You're going to go out like a, on a light <laughs> beer? We no, your this bros. Be, this is gonna be me just chatting about it. This is gonna be me chatting about it beforehand. I'm like, yeah, we gotta go out. Not that <laughs> way. You know that that's a scene they probably cut out from the movie. A bunch of guys like reading the paper. Hey, you gotta go out. Not that bad way. <laughs> Joe Montana says that to the other cop. I could have written this movie so much better. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. I, I... I'm not sure. Based, based on what's just <laughs> happened, I think not. Well, let me tell you, for the sex scene, I would do like this. I'd be like this. Oh, yeah, you like it, and you'll get more of it, and I'm going to give it to you. Wait, I'm sorry. Are you <laughs> acting in it now? Well, I, I, will, get, I will give a line read because some people say that Jim, my dialogue Jim, is dense. Writer? Jim, June, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you safe? <laughs> Are you okay? I don't feel safe right now. <laughs> I got three holes. It's your choice. <laughs> Let's go. Plug Wait, it up. Your like character a boat. has three that, holes? I'm writing for all the characters. Plug <laughs> it up like a dam. Plug it up. That, that's, a, that's a potential t-shirt. Plug Just it up a like a dam. With a guy standing in front of it. Clearly, his dick is in the dam. What? Somebody who's got paper, if we say that's a potential t-shirt, just write it down so we remember later, because we'll forget. Thank you. Um, but I guess the oh, thing that... The thing e- that I, I already have a headache. I know, I'm exhausted. Um, I mean, here's things I want to talk about. Elevator hand job. <laughs> parking, parking garage sex scene. All I want... All I want is for a woman to stand on a car and smash a light bulb so we can fuck. That's by the way, too much to ask, DC. By the way, they were getting out of court in the brightest of day, right? They were leaving, I would say, three at the most. They go into a parking lot that is so dark and it is like a, it's like the bottom of a fucking well. There is not a person, no one parked on that level at all. The elevator's packed. So what's happening on P4? Uh, I want to know. Uh, and then they fuck in a parking lot. It was an improvised scene. Um, <laughs> what? What? Oh, yeah. How does that become an improvised <laughs> scene? So Madonna did a lot of stuff in this movie where... So, okay. Uh... Basically, no body doubles were used. That's a big deal for them. They were as their bodies. And so she would do things to him to kind of goose him, like the light bulb being smashed, and then we'll get into it. But she also poured candle wax on him without telling him to get a genuine reaction. The third time she poured candle wax, which looked like it was on his dick, that was real. (laughs) And Willem Dafoe said... Uh, well, Madonna said it was very, uh, it was almost scientific. It was not sexy at all. And Willem Dafoe said, nah, he was turned on. 
It was scientific? I would maybe understand clinical, but scientific isn't right. She doesn't, I don't think she's working out a theorem. She's collecting I don't, I don't, data. I don't, I don't think this is a double blind test. <laughs> um, they did, they did rehearse, um, they did rehearse the sex scenes for a couple weeks before they started shooting. I'm sorry, what? Well, there Is was that a, a lot of quote chore- on- But there was a lot of choreography. Like, yes. the, there, oh, yeah. there was. No, no, I, I agree. I, that that yeah. sounds outrageous, but of course, because, because they're so long. Yeah. yeah. Because they're so long, and to your point, they did not use body doubles. Yeah, that's true. So they body. had to be doing, they're doing long takes. This isn't quick cut. They're not cutting between just like close up of this, close up of that, clo- like the way that sex scenes are shot a lot of times. They're doing it in camera a lot. God and, bless them. And they look good. They both look really good. I mean, you great. feel like if you These know you're in that movie. These are sexy scenes, I will say. I mean, Madonna has full on abs. Like in one scene when she is um, fingering herself there, you just see abs. I was like, wow, Madonna's in shape. Um, hey, Paul. Yeah. Is that a big thing for you? Abs, I'm like, I don't think I have abs. Oh, boy. Um, but, here, but one pervo noticed this, that Madonna's character doesn't remove her shoes in any of the three major sex scenes, except very briefly to smash a light bulb with her heel. So, so that's the light bulb scene. I, I'm, I'm confused, though. This, the movie that we saw, mm-hmm. was that unrated because I feel like I saw her vagina. What did I see? What did I just you watch? Didn't, you didn't see I the see. front of her vagina. You saw like the, I mean. Wait, <laughs> the back? I'm sorry. Show's over. Black it out. Black it out. Show's over. That's it. We're not going to beat it. We're not going to beat it. The t-shirt is the back of her vagina. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. What? Wow. What? We didn't see the front of her vagina, dot, dot, dot. Back of the shirt, we saw the back of her (laughs) vagina. Uh, Holy shit. Oh, my God. Oh. DC knows what I'm talking about, right? Oh. Oh. Holy shit. Oh my God. And I'm Holy remembering shit. conversations around where did the butt start. Oh. <laughs> this podcast is really cumulatively about the human anatomy. <laughs> and our try, I, us trying to just figure it out. Wowie. Wow. How do you describe the parts? that aren't often talked about on podcasts. <laughs> Look, if we were Savage Love, we'd know exactly what part of the vagina we saw. Wait, so June, you saw her vagina? I thought I did. I thought during... I when? Th- I'm okay, curious. I thought I actually saw wow, it. Wow, a Thank lot of applause. Oh, okay. I thought I saw it twice. I thought I saw it in the parking lot scene. It's not a front view of her vagina, but it's like a side view where if you, look, if you look closely enough, I'm pretty sure you see her vagina. And then, okay. yeah, and then, um, and also, I mean, I don't know if this is too much to get into, <laughs> but I felt like there was a bush in the VHS video and then there was no bush. She Wait, switches it up the, based the on the dude she's the dating. Movie. I thought I saw her vagina another place. I can't remember now. Oh, in the courtroom another, scene. When the judge was on the stand, the judge's vagina, right? Wow. Wow, Paul, that is a judge. We have to respect the chair. Can I just play some sassy judge? By the way, we talked about her a little bit. 
Holy shit, the back of the vagina is like a real. That's real for me. Did you have sexual relations with her? Objection, irrelevant. Your Honor, if you allow me some latitude, I can establish the relevance. You'd better. Objection overruled. The witness is directed to answer the question. No. No, you did not have sexual relations. No, we didn't. Because she refused to have sex with you. Isn't that correct? Objection. Your Honor, the counsel is trying to manufacture the implication. Get up here, both of you, right now. Mr. Delaney, if you're just bottom feeding, you're going to choke on the mud. I'm working toward a specific point, Your Honor. Work fast. I'm getting tired of seeing you this close to me. Objection overruled. I mean, spin that character off. <laughs> oh, um, I, one moment I like that has nothing to do with sex, um, the credits? <laughs> was when they go out to eat and Madonna's telling that story about the strawberry. It opens up on it's like a birthday cake coming by and Madonna is like, oh, is it for me? Oh, not for me. Like, noticed, she really seems excited. Like, oh. I noticed that as well. It seemed as though they clocked the cake as if it would be for them. <laughs> and I was like, why? Why would you ever, A, A, they put that in the, in the script. It said, a birthday cake passes by the table. They look at it, but do, then go back to their conversation. Or they improv it on the day and were like, oh, when the cake comes by, let's look at it like it's for us. And, and either way, people were like, yeah, let's do that. Maybe, I, mean, I know that Madonna was method. Julianne Moore said Madonna was so method that she wouldn't speak to her on set. Um, so maybe Madonna in her method acting was like, it is my character's birthday. Wow. Wow, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> I love that she wouldn't speak to Julianne Moore on set. Yeah, Julianne Moore was literally afraid to slap her and apparently came so far away from hitting her because she was so nervous to kind of even be in her orbit. Uh, yeah, I guess she was intimidating. I mean, Madonna was paid more than all the other actors combined on this movie. At the like, time, Madonna is unquestionably one of the most famous people in the yeah, world. They yeah. bought this script thinking, this is for Madonna. Like, we don't have a movie if we don't have Madonna. Uh, and the producer was like, please don't release that sex book. Please, 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 oh, please. really? Until the movie's out. And she didn't do it. And he blamed the, blamed the book on the, the movie getting this kind of feedback. Um, <laughs> which I don't know. Um, I don't know how that all worked out. Uh, here's my big question I wanted to ask you both. When Madonna sees him in that restaurant and she, he's like, tell me, am I, you know, look around. Who do you know that, you know, wants to fuck like that? And she looks around and, you know, it's like they got their thing. And they go back to her houseboat and she jumps out like a vampire and, and sexes him. Um, he seems aggressive from the get-go. Like, there's no, like, arc to his character. Like, he literally is ripping off her skirt in the first scene. Well, here's what, yes, I agree with you. Like, in order for it to have worked, it should be that the sex scene previous where he's having sex with Julianne yes. Moore, Feels he should appear to be and, yeah. a prude or he should be very vanilla in the sex he's having. Like, but, don't let me see the front of your vagina. Yeah, or like... Yeah, back only, <laughs> back only. Back, only the back, bottom, or top. <laughs> but not the front. Um... But, and so I think that, like, that would have made sense. Right. But it, you, you, like, they don't. He has, like, it seems like a very healthy, uh, you know, fun, robust, sex, robust life. sex life with Julianne Moore. So then... Animalistic, it, if you will. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense that he would be lured into something atyp... This it doesn't seem like a, much of a stretch. It, if he was played... If Willem Dafoe had been played by Jeff Daniels... Right. 
like the at the thing. time. You're or, right. And, or and arachnophobia, Jeff, Jeff Daniels. It's Jeff Bridges in body heat. Right. You know Absolutely. What I mean? Like Joe Montana would have been a better Willem Dafoe because he's so stoic, you know? Yeah. But it is, it doesn't play out that way. So again, it's, it's miscasting makes it not, it just, it, this could have been campier fun, I feel like. But it doesn't work in a, in a bummer way. It just is an opportunity for them to just indulge in eight minute sex scenes. I mean, and then the trial part, this is one of my favorite trial movies because everyone's up on that stand like twice. Like, yes. and I don't think that that ever really happens in a trial. Like, get him back. Get him back up there. Well, if he was in this room, he is in this room. That was my favorite moment. <laughs> How did they not see that? Everybody, every single person called to the stand is a credible witness for both lawyers. <laughs> like, 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 everyone has, every person has a full reversal within the movie's structure. It's crazy. This is terrible law. So you agree that even if she did it, she should have still been found innocent. Here's what I'll say. Because they just didn't have the they case. They didn't prove it. A reasonable yeah. Here's what doubt. I'll say. She was not found guilty. She did do the crime. Yes. Okay. Right? Look, that... Like, let's say but OJ. But a jury of let's her take peers... OJ. Let's take OJ, for example. A jury example. of her peers have decided... A jury of her peers? <laughs> Dis- okay. Jeez, Louis. Wowie, Kazawi. Okay. I mean, I mean, basically, Willem Dafoe is like reasonable doubt. Like he gave a reasonable doubt. Like he did a I mean, great Willem job. Willem Dafoe should be disbarred. What? <laughs> you can have sex with your clients, can't you? Wait, Paul. <laughs> Paul just said what? You can have sex with your clients, can't you? Of, There's I, no of rule there. You cannot. I don't no, think so. No, that's like I, not a thing. I mean, are there any there lawyers, lawyers in the house? Wait a second. All right. Okay. There's, this I, is DC. There's a lawyer in the house. Yeah, for sure, there is. I'm gonna go down there, there are so many lawyers in this room right now. There must be a code of ethics. I mean, L- raise your hand if okay, you're a hold lawyer. On. We, have, oh. we have a couple. Wow. All right. Wow. We got a lot of lawyers. All right. All right, here we Uh, go. I saw you first. Can you have sex with a client? So you can, but only if you had a pre-existing sexual relationship. You cannot start a sexual relationship when she's your client. So that's interesting now to know about Willem Dafoe's character. That he's risking not only his family, but his professional future. And and he's... When I tell you, there is no (laughs) question. He doesn't... He doesn't... He goes in. Yeah, there's no pause. She stops him. He's he's coming at it so hard in the movie. Well, no, she, she lit all those candles. No, no, outside, outside, oh, okay. outside. When she when when they when he brings her home after their celebratory dinner and whatnot, like he goes in for the kiss. Like oh, right. she's not seducing. I mean, she's you know she's she not says, seducing him out of his marriage, out of his whatever. She he is aggressive. Well, that's why I thought he was only dating Julianne Moore because because that's makes, okay to cheat. Well, because <laughs> then it's okay to fuck Madonna if they're not married. But of when course. they're dating, everything's on the table. June, June. June, June, don't, oh my God, June. oh no, oh God, June, oh God. June, June. Anyway, <laughs> DC, let's hang out tonight. <laughs> Bud Lights for everybody. DC, let's hang out tonight. Um, That's so weird. That's no, so but it was, weird. But there were. I guess what I was saying was, like, it just felt like okay, maybe they. <laughs> I mean, I'm making a lot of justifications, but he just decides to throw away his whole life in an instant. There's really no hesitation on his part at all, which I think makes him a really unsympathetic character. A hundred percent. Yes, a hundred percent. And I mean, can, as a lawyer, can you give up on your whole family in a second like that? Does any lawyers know But about here's that? the thing. That's not and for it a just, lawyer to answer, Paul. <laughs> it just highlights something which is true. A lawyer cannot be a sympathetic character. That's interesting. Except for the Lincoln lawyer. McConaughey doing law out of a car. (laughs) 
Um, my favorite line is when Julianne Moore and him have their fight in the very, very steamy alley. Uh, it looks like that alley is exporting steam for basically everywhere in the United States. Um, but uh, she goes, I hear things. People saw your car down by the river by her houseboat. Like, who the fuck is, who do you have, like, who's your intel down by the river? So you could say, like, oh, yeah, people saw you guys at dinner. People saw you fucking in the parking lot. There are so... And like, there, not and, in your car, da- like, down by the river. Is fucking Chris Farley reporting this to her? It was so... Well, he is one of her regulars. <laughs> that character, Matt, uh, whatever his name yeah, is, Matt. It's one of her char- is one of the regulars at the restaurant. They cut so out that scene. There's so much we're forced to kind of uh, create in our minds because we don't... And, and I agree, I love that we don't know a ton about their relationship, about him and... Julian Moore, but it's also troublesome because it I don't think it serves Willem Dafoe's character. Like if if we were to understand, okay, she's working a lot, this restaurant's which I think they're trying to set up a little bit. Barely. This restaurant's taking over her life. But then they seem to have a, like quite a lovely rapport and understanding of each other and co-parenting and a beautiful step-parent relationship. And then wow, you're really reading a lot. But then, no, I'll be honest. They had one the scene, yes. June, one like, scene, oh. and they fucked. I but felt then it's the like, same. Oh, they're gonna have a really vanilla sex life. Like, not really. It's too sweaty for my liking. But I think you gotta get great. sweaty if you're doing it right. So it's just so confusing. It's like, what is he running from? What is he? That's Why? the thing. Oh, in the, no. in the, the logic of the movie, the, the logic of how the movie should work, where Julianne Moore is and where Madonna is should be, should seem to be two separate, like, lives. Should right. be, seem to be, there's this life or there's this life. And they, it should be a choice that Willem Dafoe has to make. But they are so close together in terms of how compelling the sexual connection is, their, their uh, chemistry is with each other. All of that stuff seems so dialed in with Julianne Moore that it doesn't seem more dialed in or more exciting necessarily. Right. I'm sort of like, Julianne Moore would suck on your nipples if that's what you want. Or pour candle Bro, wax on you. I feel like she would. Oh, 100%. She is, they are having very fun. Buoyant. Yes. Sex. So that's why the Madonna stuff never felt like, oh, now I get to really express myself. Yeah. Hmm. Here's a thought. I know this is tough Here's a thought, and I'm just going to put it out there. Maybe they were just doing, like, dry humping in that first scene. (laughs) Paul, what do you think dry humping is? Like... No, you know, no penetration, and he's maybe wearing a little tiny jeans over his, like... Over Over his his wiener? Yeah. He's got a pair of wiener jeans? Wiener jeans! When you want to get sweaty, You're wondering what Anthony Wiener's up to now. Anthony Wiener, wiener jeans. Um, This is all I have left. But then... I do also... DC! I do love also, I mean, there's so much to talk about when he sleeps in his office and then his partner, like, runs outside the window. Oh, my God. It looks like he was on a, I mean, I guess he's not on a high floor, but why not just knock on the door? It's an office. You have to knock on the window, and the big reveal is, hey, we watched the whole tape. You remember that tape that we just stopped? Once again, the police are terrible at their jobs in this movie. Which we, is a real, you know, it's, it's a real bad look for the Portland police. <laughs> um, oh, can we just boy. talk about the reveal, the final scene, and then we'll get to the audience here. But when Madonna does reveal her end, I mean, this is one of my favorite monologues uh, ever, which is, uh, this is, this is it. This is Madonna revealing her evil plan. You slept with him? I don't think we ever slept, did we, Frank? Don't look so hurt, Alan. I fucked you, I fucked Andrew, I fucked Frank. That's what I do. I fuck. And it made me eight million dollars. So, you're fucking Dr. Paley here, and he mentions a rich patient. A rich, delicate patient. And you figure you can fuck yourself into the will. You know how to do that. I'm hard to resist. The coke came from Dr. Paley, didn't it? Made it untraceable. 
Why are you telling him? He's telling us. Now, as a screenwriter of this movie, I will say I felt like I leaned on the word fuck a little bit too much in that scene. What if, yeah, what if Willem Dafoe was Kyle MacLachlan? Mm -hmm. What if Willem Dafoe was somebody, like, truly who had, like, a boyishness to him, not a, like, uh, I suspect if you tore his face off, there's a ghoul? (laughs) There's perhaps... The potential that there's a ghoul under there. And a sexual ghoul at that. Like a ghoul who loves to fuck. (laughs) Um, That's the thing. Willem Dafoe is the wrong person to be having these... To be having, like, the the dominoes fall and have it all kind of... Whoa, whoa. It's interesting because Madonna handpicked him. There was no audition. She's like, the only person I want to do this with is Willem Dafoe. Wow, because I think it's because it's like freak meets freak, like freaks, freak sees freak. Yes. Like she sees him because they do, that's the thing, the chemistry is wrong in that it's not developed and we don't get to see him hurt here at all or feel like he risked anything emotionally and feels stupid. We just see two freaks meeting each other. And here's the thing, the, the third freak is like, what are you guys doing? (laughs) Like the foreign doctor is like, whoa, you guys are too weird for me. (laughs) Like that that guy, and me, oh God. Well, let's get into it with the audience. Let's see what you have to think about about this film. DC, we really did it. We really, really did it. All right, so I'm going to come out here to you and, and, and see what you have to say about this movie. Um, and <laughs> well, I, my first question will be this. Uh, enough sex, too much sex, or too little sex? You tell us, uh, based on this movie, what you think. More, less, or was just about right? Okay, so what's your name? It's Allison. Allison? Too much. Too much. <laughs> and your question? Did anyone else think with Ann Archer with the videotape that it was going to end up that they were together, Madonna and Andrew. Yes! 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 I was waiting for her to walk out of that hallway. Wouldn't that have been a better... Wouldn't that have been better? And why not? Because my question we don't care about this guy. Well, my question was, was that because... Did this come after... um, Isn't it Basic Instinct where it's her and Gene Triplehorn? Yeah. Right? Did they, were they like, oh, that's too much of a basic instinct ripoff? Well, here's because the I thing. was like, if this they're in movie, it together, if they're in cahoots, that's the best. This movie wouldn't have known what basic instinct was doing because it was done simultaneously. Oh, okay. So they couldn't have crimped. Then, okay, got um, it. That's what I thought was happening. It was so much worse that it was foreign doctor. I thought it was going to be the sun was going to come back <laughs> into the mix. You thought the son was the stepson of Willem Dafoe? Yeah. Julianne Moore's birth son they set it up. was fucking Madonna? They set it up so clearly. I mean, I'm an amateur sleuther, and I'm always looking for the red herrings, but that one <laughs> you know what? caught it. I might start listening to Unspooled. <laughs> All right, ma'am, your name, too much, too little, or just the right amount of sex in this movie in your question? My name's Tiffany. Just enough sex. Great. Okay, great. <laughs> so we talked a little bit about the VHS tape in the beginning. How long was this VHS tape that has been playing <laughs> since midnight? <laughs> and this is a good question because I remember that VHS tapes used to have like three settings. Two hours, two hours. four, and six. Yes. So at probably six? But they find him the next morning. My assumption is it's set to rewind and start playing itself again. In the logic of the movie, because I, I think you're right. Obviously, that would never c- continue to be being played. Um, all right. Ma'am, your name, how much sex, and your question. My name is Danny. Um, too little sex. Come on now. And That's right. Danny gets it. More sex, says Danny. So um, the Amazon review for this, yeah. or the description, opens with sex bomb Rebecca Carlson, played by Madonna, parades around naked in front of the open windows of her houseboat at all hours, even while the lobstermen catch crabs. 
What? Who wrote that? That's amazing. I know you're reading it. She's right. She's not wrong. Is that user submitted? Yeah, I have no idea. Can no, anybody not. edit that? No, wow. I'm looking at her. I'm looking at This is like a screensaver. It's the description. That is, Anya, wow. Anya. That's amazing. Ooh, that's so weird. That is also currently like the, I think on Delta Airlines now, for the good place, it says, Vinny Chase and his friends find that Hollywood's a weird place. That's how they describe the good place on Delta Airlines. Um, cool, cool brag that you fly Delta, Paul. Oh, you know it. I fly coach. <laughs> and sometimes... Middle seats on Delta! You can keep your extra leg room. I don't need it on Delta because the seats are comfortably spaced. All right, we have a question from a return live questioner. Uh, your name, when you asked your question the last time, and, um, and, and uh, how much sex in your question, yeah. Uh, my name is Madeline. I asked a question when you guys did Perfect Stranger last okay. time in D.C. Um, thank you. I don't yes. remember that uh, movie. I, I said vagina on the podcast, right, so my, my mom was really proud. Right, great. Um, How much sex? Way too much. Okay. Very uncomfortable to watch. And now your question. Um, my question is, the, so whether Madonna did or did not commit this crime, which June, I agree, unclear. Not she did it. She confessed. Um, I, I, I just want to know what you think uh, what happened today with that movie with the amount of slut shaming that was present yeah. in this film. Good question. I don't know. I mean, it is really crazy. Like, the entire movie, it's called Body of Evidence, and the female body in this movie is so dangerous. It is it's called a weapon. A weapon. Um, yeah, it's, it's absurd, and again, what my point, which I, I'll go back to, regardless of whether she committed the crime, she should never have been on trial, but women are always on trial um, for Here's what I'll say, their though. sexual agency and just their bodies. I mean, I would like to put some of the men on trial in this movie and just start trying to understand... Here's, here's, I, what, I don't disagree. Yeah, go ahead. No, what are they eating and what's their exercise routine? Because that's what you want them to be on trial for. Because they all have these heart conditions. Because here's what I'll say: and they're again. dying, and she's getting blamed for fucking them too hard. No, she's getting blamed. Listen, Madonna confesses to murder, and I don't know about you, but when a woman says something, I listen and I believe. Here we go. I listen and I believe. And when she said, I did it, I believed her. <laughs> now, Jude, I understand you're saying this woman is not to be believed. <laughs> all I'm saying wow. is, all I'm saying is this. If she had done it, that's fine. That's she did her, do it. That's her choice. That's her body and that's her choice. However... <laughs> can I pause it? Can I pause it one thing? Pause the podcast? <laughs> no. Can it's going to be just it? dead air. to pause it something. I want to pause it something. Okay, pause, pause it. it. The first time Willem Dafoe has sex with Madonna, he dies. <laughs> and this is Paul. Shame is on you. Paul, Paul, this is not a Jacob's Ladder scenario. <laughs> Maybe that glass from the light bulb went into his spine. That's not the first time they have sex. Well, I'm now amending it. And, <laughs> and then the, the end of the movie is his fantasy because he can't justify this powerful woman not being guilty. Okay, where are you, Paul? I'm freaking out right now. He's right I'm up there. in the balcony. Oh, okay, okay. He's right up there. I see him. I see him. Thank you. With... My monsters, Lady Gaga has her monsters. We have our balcony monsters, sir. I sir. mean, listen, just to go back to Madonna yeah. for a second. <laughs> we have to remember that this was during a time where a woman having sexual agency and sexual impulses and writing a book called Sex, it, it was an insane thing that was going on. And 
I think the audience, audiences were so incredibly curious and scared about what that meant. And Agreed. you see it in the movie. Like, people are terrified of And her. that's what I think that... T- yes, turns out they should be. But... <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I think these movies, though, are, uh, Basic Instinct is another one, they are equating a woman's sexual power with murderous intent. Absolutely. And that, I think, is irresponsible to say that someone who is so sexually liberated and sexually free is also, like, without morals and capable of murder. It just so had, like, I think that is a false equivalency and and is an irresponsible line to draw. In the movie, she does murder the guys. Yes. But she Those should be are treated, separate things. But she should be treated as an innocent woman because she was never found guilty for that crime. She should be... She should. She is innocent until proven guilty. Which she was not. She was proven... She was shown to be innocent but admitted her guilt. Not in a court of law. Not in a court of law. Not in I a mean, court this of law. A Not in a court of law, and she won't be tried again because well, don't she. Don't worry about it, Jason. She's dead. <laughs> okay, she got or, or is she? Killed. Killed. Or is she? Were those blanks? Maybe she's alive. Jason Bourne went into the water. He came out. <laughs> All right, sir. Your name, the amount of sex in the movie, your question. Uh, Brian, shorter sex? Okay. So you like the amount, but just shorter scenes? I would have been fine with a montage scene instead. Okay. And um, mm-hmm. why was Julian more That's at a the very courthouse? revealing. These, this is a very revealing yeah, answer for cuts. everybody. Quick cut. For everybody. Yeah, everybody this reveals wh- too much, honestly, Paul. I'm everybody, when question. you go home tonight, everybody who's answered a, that question, your partner is going to be like, why did you say that? <laughs> Why did you say shorter? Or why did you say not enough? Or why did you say too much? Why? (laughs) A lot of hard conversations tonight. A lot of people saying to their partners, what would you have said? (laughs) What would you have said? Too much, not enough, just enough. Sir, your question. Why was Julianne Moore at the courthouse? A million percent. And I'm gonna double down on that question and go, and why was she on that pier? Agree. Agree. Oh, I thought that was Ann Archer. Who's updating her? I thought, wait, you mean at the very end? I thought that Julian was Ann Moore. Archer. That was Julian, Julian Moore. Moore and Ann Archer unfortunately had similar haircuts and colors. Yeah. Which was, which was tough. I agree. Um, but I, that also made no sense because I didn't know who was telling her to go there. I guess maybe the same person that told her that his car was there. Who is hey, that person? Hey, guess what? You're going to want to get down here to the docks because your guy is here. That broad is dead and things are out of control. <laughs> but honestly, girl, put a turtleneck and a leather jacket on and look good. And Keep she was it like, cute. she was like, I'm Julianne Moore. I got this on lock. For the next 40 years, I'm still going to look unreal. No. It's like, she does look better now. She is And one she of looked amazing then. Unreal. Unbelievable. Ma'am, your name, the amount of sex, your question. I'm Sarah. Uh, there was not enough sex on a pile of broken glass. Uh, I thought that was uh, also dangerous. So, uh, did you guys know that Willem Dafoe has such a large penis that actually... In the film Antichrist, they had to get a body double with a smaller penis because Lars Van Trier thought that his penis was confusingly large. (laughs) 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 Uh, This gentleman, this gentleman said... Confusingly large is the greatest... (laughs) Phrase okay. I've ever heard. Confusingly large? That means that it, in regards to his body, caused like a dissonance. The visual wow. was confusing. I mean, now we know why Madonna wanted Willem yes. to in this part. Yes! It's quite hun- clear. A hundred percent. Wow. I will never forget that. Um, that I will would, always be with me. I would love to need a body double for that reason. 
I, mean, I want to see. To. I want to see a Dumb and Dumber movie with Fassbender and Willem Dafoe called Big and Bigger, <laughs> and they're just pantsless the entire time, just schlonging it out. The only time I did a nude scene, they had to bring in somebody to do the penis scene, just because they were like, we don't want people to think there's a little kid in the movie. You, sir, said that you saw his penis. Yes. So, <laughs> so. If you watch, I watched the Amazon version. Got it. And in the scene where she is pouring the wax on his body, it, it does a long cut through one of the million drapes that they have, and his penis is flopping underneath her person. And you can continue to see up and down, which posits the question that you were asking earlier. Maybe the rubbing and the dry humping was what Madonna brought to the table. Oh, so she never had penetration. Oh, sorry, she what? never had penetration. <laughs> I was about, I was about oh. to say, oh, she yeah. never had penetrative sex. Yeah, that's very sexy and very different. What I would love is for women to describe my penis as flopping around. Flopping. Ooh, it was so good. His penis like flopped around for a while. You know, you know, we kissed. He like. He teased my tits a bit, and then like I flopped his dick around, and then you know we got down to straight up B I Z, and then he jazzed on my toes. <laughs> to describe oh. a penis like a fish that you just caught and threw on the deck of a ship <laughs> is a really tough image. Flopping uh, around. Your name, the amount of sex, your question. Liz, right amount of sex. <laughs> we haven't talked about the pharmacy scene yet. So, was it real cocaine, and was the doctor in on it? Great question. Yes, was it real cocaine? Let's go to the monitor. What? Oh, oh, geez, I guess it went out. No. <laughs> I don't mind because it was making a hum. Now I feel much better, actually. Um, so you're, the question is, what was the, the... The question is, was the pharmacist in on it? Oh, yes. Thank you. The pharmacist was, the pharmacist, not the doctor, you mean when she goes to get acupuncture? Yes. The he doctor. was a doctor. He was, yeah, I think that, that I think is... The that's guy at all, the end. That's all, that's all, not, it's not fake, it's all real stuff, but I think she was, in fact, probably in the past tense doing cocaine. Right? Is that the question? I, I'm not sure what the question is. I'm the, still thinking about. Well, the question is this: what, Does she penis. really have bad cramps, or was she addicted to coke? Or no, are both she's true? doing coke. When when Ann Archer saw her in the bathroom, she was doing coke. She wasn't, I don't think, sniffing a, a, a Chinese herb to help um, with her cramps. She is a murderer. Oh, Again, both what are you be guys true? Doing? Can't both be true? Why can't a woman have bad cramps and be a cokehead? We're in D.C. How many women have terrible cramps and are addicted to cocaine? By raising... Tra yeah, there you go. A lot of hands just went up. Um, I like to uh, always share a little bit of a fun fact now before we get into the uh, next part of the show. And this is a fun fact here. Joe Montana stated in an interview that filming the courtroom scenes were so tedious that two of the extras playing jurors fell asleep during the filming of William Defoe's closing statement. And so he had to yell at them to wake up. <laughs> and also, this is uh, the second movie in two years in which Madonna plays a character who picks up a bottle of champagne out of an ice bucket while wearing black underwear. The other is Dick Tracy. So that's a little, again, fun pervert fact for you. Um, obviously, we had opinions about this movie, but there are people out there with a different opinion. It is now time for Second Opinions. All right. I made it through the movie now. Somehow I made it through. Gotta get on Amazon, give a five star review. Oh, that was great. That was good. What's your name? Give it up for Amy! Great work! Great work, DC! Fantastic job! Wow, we had a bunch of great Second Opinion songs there. Unfortunately, you could only hear one of them, um, but we'll be releasing a full cast album uh, at the end of this tour. Oh my God. Um, these all, are, of, all of them will be available in a playlist on Spotify. 
We are going to get them up and keep all those pennies. Um, all right, so these are five-star reviews, cold from Amazon.com. There are 176 reviews for this film. That's a lot. Uh, 40% are five-star reviews. 40%. Um, there's a couple here, and I'm trying to break down which ones I want to read. This one is from C.F. Mullins. C.F. Mullins writes, It begins with some skin, and that skin quickly turns out to be cause of death. <laughs> but is it murder? A lot of people want to know, and the answer is not clear. There's an ongoing investigation gets all tangled up with more sex in unusual places. There's passion, betrayal, and cover-up. Is there a good guy in all of this? Five stars. <laughs> huh. This one, uh, I'll start off really simply. This is uh, written by Gene2LR, and uh, the review is this. Very erotic. Five stars. <laughs> Jay Aubrey writes, I recommend that you listen to the erotica album, thumb through the sex book, and then watch this movie. Madonna could put Viagra out of business. <laughs> Only prudes and those foolish but well-meaning Republicans could dislike Madonna. A plus. Can you imagine a world in which Madonna could put Viagra out of business? I mean, apparently this person does a lot. Um, Every, here's the thing that, you're, that is the, I feel like the subtext of all of these reviews. They were all written right after coming. Some dude was like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> This one is a little bit long. It's written by Stella Carrier. Truthfully, the fact that I'm a Madonna fan and an aspiring writer were a couple of the factors that influenced me to watch Body of Evidence when I ran across the synopsis just yesterday. I admit I rented this film and I plan on eventually buying it to expand my outlook on plot ideas for writing. <laughs> on both the happy and dramatic, dramatic slash shadowy sides of life. As a writer, I wish that Madonna's character could have been gotten a different ending and maybe showed her in a more favorable light. I admit, Me too. I admit that I was uneasy about Madonna being called to play a man-eater due to a man-eater being similar to a womanizer and a man-eater being an archetype that is judged in a harsh light regardless of how attractive and or intelligent a woman is considered. I also wish the writing could have been done to at least have a female friend of Rebecca Carlson who could have warned her to minimize and or avoid talking to Delaney's wife even if it meant that she avoids talking to and or seeing him again after the court case. <laughs> the additional caveat is that person must have an open mind to enjoy this film, to watch this movie due to some of the shocking graphic scenes. Hopefully one day when Madonna writes her memoir, she might share her candid thoughts on how she felt about Body of Evidence and some of her other films. Yes, obviously I would pre-order Madonna's book <laughs> and or Kindle memoir regardless of whether she hires a ghostwriter or not. <laughs> Five stars. Being a Madonna fan slash aspiring author. Uh, that was that. And I end it here. Uh, <laughs> this is a, a, a non-attributed review, and it just says, Excellent movie. The story, the acting, everybody played their part beautifully except the judge. She sucked. <laughs> Five stars. Boo! We love the judge. We, we love, love the, the judge. judge. We, we love the judge. judge. We, we love the judge. judge. It's so easy to get you to chant. What? That was meaningless. And yet you just jumped right on it. Come on. 
Um, you'd be uh, interested to know that um, in 1996, in an interview with Cosmopolitan, Madonna stated that there are two different endings filmed for this movie, one in which her character lived and one in which she died, and they went with the misogynistic ending. Uh, she said, a film is a director's medium. In other words, try not to work with a director who hates women. In my case, that means I'll be photographed badly and end up dead in the end. Uh... <laughs> she, uh, she, and then Madonna goes on to say, I fought every step of the way. I had no control. Women who has sex must die. That is the theme of the movie, but it wasn't the way to begin with. I am disappointed in it, but I'm not sorry I did it. I think I did a good job, but I got blamed for it. Everything. Like, I wrote it, produced it, directed it, and I was only there to act in it. So that's what she said. I love her. Um, this movie's uh, tagline was an act of love or an act of murder. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> um, and the budget was $30 million. Wow. Opening weekend was $7 million. And the total domestic gross, $13 million. This came out in Oof. 1993. Uh, this movie came in 91 out of all movies made in 1993. So you could see Jurassic Park, Mrs. Doubtfire, The Fugitive. This movie was beaten by Demolition Man, Super Mario Brothers. Uh, but this wow. movie beat Surf Ninjas, Mr. Nanny, Airborne, and Deadfall. So uh, it did do a little bit better than our other films. Um, June, Jason, would you recommend people see this film? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's Madonna. There's lots of sex scenes. I mean, yeah, see this movie. It's, I enjoyed, I did fall asleep a number of times. Twice. <laughs> and when you say fall asleep, I, I described this to Jason too. You didn't just fall asleep. You closed your notebook, you pushed it to the side, and you put your head down on a pillow. It was, it was like you were like, you decided to sleep in certain you, parts of this you movie. Wa you washed your face, you tucked yourself in. That's true. You put a white noise machine on. That's true. I think there were I was watching you, and I was like, I guess she's going to sleep. <laughs> there were about, I, I think for about 10 minutes of this movie, I just listened, and I just had my eyes closed. But um, this is the second time I've seen it. I'll probably see it again at Wait, some point. what was point the first life. time? I told you, I think I'm almost positive I saw it with my parents. Oh, right, yes, sorry. Um, I would also say see this. I mean, listen, I would say there are a number of other movies in this genre that do this better. And many of which have I already mentioned. I mean, uh, uh, Basic Instinct, uh, 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 um, Body Heat. Uh, um, there's a lot of, what's the uh, red, what's the Linda Fiorentino? Uh, the one with David Caruso? No, th that's Linda Fiorentino. That's Sliver, right? No, Jade. Jade, that's not good. <laughs> there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of, Re Red Rock West, is that a movie? There's a bunch of like femme fatale modern noirs that I think do this better. Problem solved. Um, that, but I still think this is enjoyable. I think there's a bunch of great performances in it that are okay. It's fun. It's super sexy. I, I don't know. I, I don't know, guys. I don't know. <laughs> but, I don't, yeah, I think it's fine. Uh, uh, especially yeah. for the podcast. Yeah, I think it's a very interesting movie to watch. You know, I guess if you get insulted by you know, maybe... Body heat. Guys, body heat. That's all I'll say. That, that they should watch that Watch instead. body heat. I've never seen it. Oof. <laughs> Am I wrong? Am I misremembering? No, people don't like body heat? Interesting. Tepid Jagged reaction. Edge? Jagged Edge is not a sex movie. It's not? Not really. <laughs> What's Jagged Edge? It's like a court thing where you think that Jeff Bridges is innocent and then he like... Ice his... Castles? <laughs> oh, wow. What's Ice Castles? I think that's like a pirate ice movie. Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. <laughs> if you like erotic thrillers like Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants or The Sandlot... Oh, no. Well, we always thank our amazing producer, Avril Halley, for pulling these amazing clips, finding these fantastic films. Nate, 
Kylie for doing all this amazing research. Our engineer, Devin, who's here with us here in D.C. Uh, we thank them all, but most importantly, we thank you, D.C., yes. for coming out on a Sunday. Thank you so much for coming, D.C. We'll see you again. Good night. Woo! Thank you. Did it. All right, that brings us to the end of our very special Body of Evidence episode. A uh, couple of announcements. Uh, June's book, Represent, A Woman's Guide to Running for Office and Changing the World, is available wherever you get your books. Um, and if you're a fan of The Good Place, well, guess what? You know, Jason and I have both been on The Good Place, and maybe you'll be in for a treat in the final season. Who knows? Do we pop up? If I'm talking about it, chances are probably yes. Uh, John Wick 3 still out on video. I mean, it's it's still happening. It's there. And I just want to give a shout out to Big Mouth season uh, three, which is currently up on Netflix. It's so funny. It's so good. Jason, June, and I are all in it. And of course, Nick Kroll. And if you've not watched the Disclosure episode yet, uh, based on the movie Disclosure, which we talked about a few weeks ago, you are missing out. It's so, so solid. Uh, a big shout out to Devin, who engineered this live in Washington, D.C., to Avril Halley, our producer who picked this film. She is amazing. You can go follow her on Movie Bitches on YouTube. Um, also a big shout out to Nate Kylie for doing all of our research, Kyle Waldron, and also the ghost of Craig T. Nelson for designing some really amazing complimentary artwork for these shows. And of course, our in-studio producer, Cody Fisher, just killing it. Everybody at Earwolf, we thank you so much. <laughs>